Summary of the Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin A group of protesters forms at the wall around the port of Anars as a spaceship waiting to take off from there gets ready to take off. As a guy walks through the empty field and over the wall towards the ship, the protesters see him and start to chase him. Members of the Anaresti Defense Syndicate surround the man and hurry him to the ship as protesters start throwing rocks, hitting the man in the shoulder and killing a defense syndic. The person gets on board, the ship's doors close, and the angry crowd disperses within a few minutes. A guy named Shevek is a passenger on the ship, which is a freighter called the Mindful. An Urasti doctor named Kimo takes Shevek to his cabin and gives him several vaccines. In the days that follow, Shevek gets a high fever from the vaccines. When he wakes up, he finds that he is halfway to Uras, which is his home planet's moon, twin, and enemy planet. Shevet gets ready to land on Urus by talking to Dr. Kimo. Urus is a capitalist and very socially divided world. Shevet gets off the mindful when it lands. He is met by reporters and tourists who take pictures of him and shout at him. He is the first man from the moon to them. Shevek is picked up by a limo and taken to Neoasia's main city, where he will stay at the IEU Un University. Shevek's handlers, a group of five guys, point out things to him as they fly through the countryside. At the university, Shevek talks with both university officials and diplomats from the state of AIO. The IOTI president makes a toast to a new era of brotherhood between the twin planets. Shevek's guards take him to his room at the university after the party and help him get settled in. In a scene, the story goes back to Shevek's childhood in Anars. In each part, the book goes back and forth between the present, which is Shevek's trip to Uras, and the past, which is the story of his life on Anars. Shevek plays with other babies in an Anaresti community nursery when he is a baby. He doesn't understand that none of the toys or other things in the room belong to him. Everyone on Anars owns everything there. Shevek's father, Palette, has come to get Shevek from the nursery so he can say goodbye to his mother, Rulag, who has been sent to work far away. The Anaresti live in groups called syndicates, and labor rotation often breaks up families or forces people to move far away quickly. The story jumps ahead a few years to when Shevek was in school. As an eight-year-old, he is very smart and still very impulsive. His teacher at the learning center says that Shevek is egoizing when he tries to explain a hard maths problem to his classmates. Shevek is kicked out of class and realizes that he will have to wait until other people are interested in the same kinds of problems as him. The story jumps ahead again. This time, Shevek is a preteen, and he and his friends are learning about jails, which don't exist on Anars. The boys are so interested in the idea that they decide to make their own jail. One of their friends, Kadagv, is locked up and left for 30 hours in a crawl area under the school. When they let him go, he has messed himself, and Shevek sees for the first time how dangerous it is to have power over someone else. The story moves forward once more. Shevek is a teen who goes to school at the North Setting Regional Institute. He and his childhood friends Tyron and Badap talk about Uras in a theoretical way. In one of their lessons, the boys recently watched some old footage of life on Uras. They were shocked by the huge difference between the Urasti poor in the nation of Thursday and the wealthy property class in the nation of AIO. Since the Adonian Revolution brought Urasti anarchists to Anars more than 150 years ago, there is a wall between the two planets that can't be broken. The boys know that freighters can only leave the port of Anars to trade resources between the two planets a few times a year. In another flash-forward scene, 18-year-old Shevek goes to work for the first time in the dusty desert, where he does physical labor. Shevek starts dating a woman named Bishun, but their relationship falls apart when both of them get new jobs. Shevek goes back to the North Setting Regional Institute and his physics teacher, the wise and old Midas, where he feels at home. Midas sends one of Shevek's advanced works to a physicist named Sabul who lives in the big city of Abene. Sabol invites Shevek to come study with him. Midas tells Shevek that if he leaves, Sabol will own him, 
but Shevek doesn't pay much attention to her advice because no one owns anyone or anything else on Anars. Shevek wakes up at IEUUN University in his room on Uras. He can't believe he has the whole room to himself. It's so big and nice, and he can't believe it's just for him. Shevek looks out the window at the beautiful Urasti landscape and thinks, this is how a world should look. He meets his manservant Effer, but he doesn't know what it means to be served. He then invites a group of Urasti physicists who are supposed to be his guides into his room. Chifoilisk, OIIE, Atro, and Pei are happy to finally meet Shevek, who they have written to and talked to on the radio for many years. The men welcome Shevek home and give him a statue made of solid gold. The statue is an award that Shevek won many years ago but never got to receive. The guys ask Shevek how far he is with his general temporal theory, which is what he came to Uras to finish. Shevek tells them that it's all in his head. Shevek is happy to find that he has finally met people who are as smart and interesting as he is. He tells the men that he didn't come to their world as an anaresti diplomat but as a physicist on his own accord. Shevek has to stay in his room for a few days while his shots take effect. He spends this time reading the Urasti science, history, and art books that his handlers bring him, as well as newspapers that talk about growing trouble in the Urasti state of Benbili. Shevek is led out after three days, and his handlers take him all over the city and the countryside. At the end of his time as a tourist, Shevek realizes he was wrong to think he could bring together two worlds that are so different from each other. He feels like he doesn't fit in either one. In the past story, Shevek comes in Abine and goes to the Central Institute of the Sciences. There, for the first time in his life, he is given a single room. He meets Sabul, a physicist who will be his guide, the next day. Sabul, who is rude and nasty, tells Shevek that he needs to learn Iodi, the language of Uras, before he can learn real physics, because all of the latest discoveries in physics happen on Uras and are written in Iotic. Sabol tells Shevek not to let anyone else read his Iodi texts or find out that he is learning the language. Shevek learns Iodi quickly after locking himself in his room and working hard to learn it. He only leaves to go to physics classes taught by Gverub, an old but smart woman who is not well liked at the institute by anyone but Shevek. Shevek starts working on a unified theory of time right away, and in the meantime, he writes criticisms of Eurasti work that Sabol sends straight to the physicists on Uras via freighter. Shevek is excited and scared to talk to the Eurasti, which is a big no-no on Anars. Shevek finds out in the end that Sabol has been taking credit for his work while talking to the Eurasti. In theory, everything on Anars belongs to everyone, so it makes sense that Sabol would do this. Shevek gets sick and goes to a nearby clinic because he has a fever. When his fever goes away, he wakes up to find a woman sitting next to him. She says her name is Rulag and that she is his mother. She asks about Shevek's father, Palat, and Shevek tells her that Palat has been dead for a long time. Rulag tells Shevek that her work has always come first. She doesn't say sorry, but Shevek can see that she is hurting and lonely. Rulag asks Shevek if they can finally be together, but Shevek says no, so Rulag leaves him alone in the clinic to cry. As a new school year starts at IEUUN University, Shevek moves to Uras and gets to work. He teaches and writes papers, but he feels like he isn't doing anything worthwhile because he isn't working on his general temporal theory. Shevek goes shopping for the first time in his life. He buys a custom-made, expensive suit and shoes. Chifoilisk, a physicist from the socialist state of Thursday, warns Shevek not to let himself be bought by the Iodi. He also tells him not to write down his general temporal theory, even if he finishes it, because the Iodi government will take it from him and claim it as their own. Less than a week after they talked, Pei told Shevek that Chifoilisk had been called or sent back to his home country of Thursday. In Chifoilisk's absence, Shevek becomes friends with the famous physicist Atro. Atro thinks that Cetians, the race of the Eurasti and Anaresti people, are the best in the galaxy and the only people who are meant to do well. Atro tells Shevek that when the time comes for him to share his general temporal theory, he should make sure that only Cetians use it. 
In the past, Chevet goes back to his room at the institute after getting better from his illness. He no longer works alone because his mother Rulag's words keep going through his head and he doesn't want to become a slave to his own egoism. Shevek writes his own letters to the physicists on Uras, but Sabol won't send them for him. Out of spite, he won't send anything that doesn't directly relate to his own study. Shevek is very excited for the few letters from Uras that he gets each year. Gverb dies, and Shevek feels like everything is pointless. He meets up with his childhood friend Badap, and for a short time, the two try to date. They fight a lot, though, and soon stop being friends. They stay close friends and talk in secret about how anaresti traditions get in the way of progress, change, free will, and the intellectual and social growth of society. Badap asks Shevek and a group of his friends to go hiking. During the hike, Shevek meets Takver, a woman he is immediately interested in. Badap reminds Shevek that Takver went to school with them at North Setting, and Shevek feels bad that he didn't remember her. After a few days of hiking, Shevek and Takver are alone for the first time and start talking about how attracted they are to each other and how they both want an exclusive relationship, which is pretty rare on Anars. When they get back from their trip, they move in together and start dating. Shevek orders a new coat from a tailor shop in Neoasia as fall turns into winter on Uras. When it gets there, it will have a letter in its pocket. In the letter, Shevek is told to stop working for the power system that is hurting his world and to join his brothers. No one has signed the letter. Shevek realizes after reading the letter that he has been bought after all. He is cut off from the real people of Uras and kept in the pockets of the Iodi higher classes the whole time. Shevek asks Efer, his manservant and the only person he has met on Uras who is not from the propertied class, to tell him stories about what life is really like there, but Efer refuses. Shevek meets Vea, the beautiful sister of the physicist Oiie, when he goes to Oiie's house to have dinner. Even though they only spend a few hours together, Vea asks Shevek to come see her again. Shevek reads more and more about the revolution in Benbili, where rebels overthrew a military dictator. He learns that the Iodi state is sending troops to stop the rebels and put the dictator back in power, while the Thursday state is sending troops to help the rebels and keep the dictatorship at bay. As Shevek gets closer and closer to finishing his general temporal theory, he worries that he hasn't seen enough of life on Uras and is wasting his time there. Shevek takes a train to Neoasia for the day, where he meets up with Vea and goes out with her. That night, at a party at her flat, Shevek drinks for the first time in his life. After making a fool of himself by beating up Vea and urinating on her dress, Oiie and Pei take him home. When Pei puts Shevek to bed for the night, he takes a paper from Shevek's desk and says out loud to Oiie that he thinks Shevek is a fake and won't give the idea to AIO. Even the big city of Abene on Anars has been hit by the worst drought in 40 years. As Shevek, Takver, Badap, and their group of friends think about the growing inequality in Anaresti society and the growing control of the PDC, the Production and Distribution Coordination, which manages workgroups and labor assignments on Anars, has over the lives of Anaresti citizens, people all over the planet have to deal with new rationing rules. Takver is pregnant, and Shevek is having trouble at the institute. Sabol told him that his study wasn't important, and he won't let him print his most recent paper. Takver tells Shevek to give in and let Sabol take a co-writing credit to see if that makes a difference. Soon after, Shevek's draft is published, but Sabol's name is also on it. Shevek has a girl, Sadik, but by the end of winter, there is still no sign that the drought will end. Labor drafts are happening more often and are getting more important, and Shevek will soon have to leave for an emergency posting. While Shevek is away, Takver sends him a letter telling him that she, too, has been moved and will soon leave Abinay. When Shevek's shift is over, he goes back to Abinay, but Takver and their baby girl are no longer there. Sabol tells Shevek that he won't be sent back to the institute, and Shevek realizes that he will never be able to get back in. Shevek goes to Divlab, which is the central post office for the Division of Labor, and asks to be put near Takver. However, there is nothing open. 
Shevek doesn't want to stay in Abine or follow Takver to a place where he won't be useful, so he asks for a famine prevention job and is given a job organizing work in the dust, a desert area. Shevek feels sick, shaky, and embarrassed when he wakes up on Uras the morning after Vea's party. He thinks about his mistakes and feels bad that the Iote state now owns him. He thinks he should have never come to Uras at all. He decides that neither the Iote state nor the Iote thinkers, who only want to use his work to help themselves, will get any more of his work. Pei shows up and tells Shevek that AIO is now in charge of the state of Benbili even though Thursday still controls the easternmost areas of Benbili. Now, the two countries will fight each other in Benbili, so that the fighting doesn't spill over into AIO. Pei says that now that AIO is truly at war, Shevek can expect some new rules. For example, Shevek won't be able to leave the university campus without the Chancellor's permission. Pei also tells Shevek that an IOTI engineer has made plans for a device called the Ansible which will let any two planets in the galaxy talk to each other instantly. All the engineer needs to make the device work is Shevek's idea. After Pei leaves, Shevek tells Effer to tell anyone who comes to see him that he is working hard and can't see them. He finally gets to work on the general temporal theory. After a lot of hard work, he finally has a big idea and realizes that his theory is done. After Atro's troubling visit one night, during which he praised the war in Benbili and the Iote state's greatness, Shevek realizes that he needs to leave the university, which has become a prison for him. Shevek and Effer have a secret talk in Shevek's bathroom while the water is running, in case the room is bugged. Effer says that Shevek's living room has a microphone. Shevek shows Effer the note he found in the pocket of his coat and asks Effer how he can find the person who wrote it. Effer tells Shevek to find a guy named Tuyomida in Old Town and helps him call a taxi to get away from Iu Un. Shevek goes out into the night after Effer promises to cover for him. When he gets to Old Town, he is shocked by how poor everyone is. He asks the owner of a pawn shop how to find Tuyomida. The owner takes him to a food store, where he finally finds Tuyo. Shevek tells Tuyo that he has something the state needs. When he first got to Uras, he didn't know that any theories he came up with would belong to the state. Shevek knows that Tuyo doesn't need his idea. Tuyo is a member of an underground group of syndicalists and libertarians. This group works with the leftists in Thursday and supports many of the ideas of the Anaresti Odonian movement. Shevek offers to join a peaceful protest later that week, and Tuyo decides to give Shevek a place to stay until the protest. Shevek gives a speech to the 100,000 people who have gathered in the town square for the protest. He talks about friendship and tells the poor and powerless that they can start a revolution. As Shevek's speech comes to an end, state planes start firing on the crowd from above. Shevek gets away from the police by taking a wounded friend to the basement of a warehouse. He stays there for three days while police keep shooting people in the streets. Shevet comes out of the basement after his friend dies to find the streets empty and quiet. Shevek is leaving the southwest area of Anars, where he has been stationed for the past four years. He has been away from Takver for all of that time. During the years of famine, he saw a lot of terrible suffering. His job in the dust, which was to make lists of who would eat while hundreds of people starved, disgusted him. Shevek looks for Takver when he gets to a city called Chakar. He finds her living in a house with another person. Sadik, their daughter, is bigger now, and she doesn't know Shevek. All three of them get back together with tears in their eyes, and Shevek realizes that the famine has hurt Takver just as much as it has hurt him. Takver wishes she had turned down the job that took her away from Abine, and she says she wants to go back. Shevek and Takver talk about how free will is breaking down on Anars. They realize that Badap's fears about the PDC's growing power were always right. Shevek agrees with Takver that he wants to go back to Abine. He suggests that they start a printing company to promote freedom of the press and spend the rest of their lives tearing down the walls that have grown up in Anaresti society. On Urus, in a city called Rod Dared an Hour from Neoasia, 
a bloodied and tired Shevet goes to the Terran embassy and asks for refuge. The Terrans, who used to live on Earth, give it to him and let Shevek rest and heal for two days before they start talking to the famous physicist. Shevek finally meets the Terran representative, Kang. Kang tells Shevek that he is safe and that the Iodi government only thinks it knows where he is. Kang asks Shevek about life on Anars and why he came to Uras. She doesn't understand why the Iodi government would let an Odonian anarchist stay at their university when the world is in such chaos. Shevek tells Kang that he was a pet of the Iodi government and that he was never supposed to talk to people from the lower classes or join the revolution. He tells Kang that his study was always meant to be stolen, not to bring peace and brotherhood to the universe, but to further the goals of the Cetian and the Iodi. Shevek tells Kang about the idea of the Ansible and tells her that instant contact across the universe would be a step towards transilience, which is the instant transfer of matter throughout the universe. He thinks the Eurasti would use transilience for evil and war. Shevek tells Kang that he wants to give the Terrans his general temporal theory, which is now finished, as a gift because he knows they will use it for the good of everyone. Shevek then asks Kang to help him get back to Anars, which she agrees to do. On Anars, Bidap and Shevek go to a PDC meeting as members of their new group, the Syndicate of Initiative. They talk about how they talked to Uras and why it was important. The people of Benbili have gotten in touch with the people of Anaresti to ask if they can send some of their people to Anars who call themselves Odonians. The PDC is very against it, especially Rulog, who thinks that letting Eurasti come to Anars is a threat to security and an insult to God. Shevek speaks up and asks if it's possible for someone from Anars to go to Uras, since no one from Uras is allowed to go to Anars. Rulag says that anyone who leaves Anars can't come back. She says that if someone tried to come back, they would be punished and maybe even hurt. Bidap takes the topic off the table, and the two of them leave the meeting. Shevek has been called to the institute, so Bidap goes to Shevek and Takver's flat to hang out with Takver and their new baby, Piluin. Takver tells Bidap that Rulag is Shevek's mother. Bidap thinks that Rulag is so outspoken against their syndicate because she feels bad about leaving Shevek. Shevek and Sadik go back to their flat. When they get there, Shevek tells Sadik that he just talked to Sabul, who has offered him a full-time, independent job at the institute. Shevek, Takver, and Bidap all think that the PDC is trying to use a great job offer to get Shevek to stay on Anars and leave the syndicate of initiative. Shevek and Bidap walk Sadik back to the children's room after dinner, but she refuses to go in because she says the other kids are mean to her and tell her that her family is a traitor. Bidap goes home, and Shevek brings Sadik back to the flat. Takver tells Sadik that she has also been treated badly at work because she is friends with Shevek. The two of them talk about how they can get away from the ridicule of their fellow Anaresti, but they both agree that they would face threats and violence no matter where they went. Takver finally tells Shevik that he needs to go to Uras. He'll be able to do his study and won't have to worry about being persecuted. She'll be able to take the kids to a small coastal town and live anonymously there. Takver thinks it's worth the chance that Shevik won't be able to come back if he can follow his dreams and make something good for everyone. In the present, Shevik is flying back to Anars from Uras on a blimp. It is a Hainish ship called the Davenant. It is neither luxurious in the way of the Eurasti nor plain in the way of the Anaresti. Shevet keeps to himself and stays quiet for most of the trip. He feels like a man who just got out of jail. He only talks when he is asked to, but he does quickly talk to the syndicate of initiative back on Anars to set up the landing procedure. A Hainish man called Kitho is the ship's first mate. He tells Shevek that he will be the one to take him back to the surface. Shevek warns Kitho that there might be violence, but Kitho still wants to go to the top of Anars and live there for a while, not just visit. Shevek tells Kitho that he might not be welcomed, but he doesn't want to help build more walls between Anars and the rest of the universe, so he lets Kitho land with him and tells him that he will be treated as an Anaresti as soon as he crosses the wall that separates the port from the rest of the planet. As Shevek and Kitho get ready to land, 
Shevek is excited to see Takver, Sadik, and Peluin again. About the author Ursula K. Le Guin was an American who wrote science fiction and fantasy. For most of her life, she was known as America's greatest living science fiction writer. She is said to have changed the genre by using lyrical writing, Taoist ideas, and feminist, anarchist, and environmentalist themes in her many works. Le Guin's name has become synonymous with using fictional worlds to explore the nature of reality, the problems at the heart of the human condition, and the possibilities and dangers that humans face as a species. Le Guin was born in Berkeley, California, to parents who were anthropologists. She went to Radcliffe College and Columbia University and worked as a secretary and a French teacher before becoming a full-time science fiction writer. Le Guin didn't want to be pigeonholed as a science fiction writer. Instead, she wanted to be known as an author. Still, her lasting impact on the genre-led authors like David Mitchell, Cloud Atlas, Neil Gaiman, American Gods, The Sandman, Kelly Link, Magic for Beginners, and Jeff Vandermeer, Annihilation, to write in the same style. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.